In my hand, I have a Windows tablet. It's more exactly Chewy H High 10 HR, which is useless. You, you can't use it anymore today. It was good when it was released, but now it's useless. But I want to try something different today. I want to see if I can make this device a media server. So what I'm going to do is try to install Debian on it and then try to install Castle OS and see how well this will go and how well will the movies play using Castle OS on this device. So let's jump into the video. Okay, so the first thing that we need is a, you know, a USB stick, which I already plugged it in, which is this one. And now I need to download Debian. So if we go to the official website and download the latest version of Debian, I will have it here. And now we need Lena Etcher. So I can, you know, write this image on my USB stick. So now that everything is downloaded, all we have to do is just open Balena Etcher, which for some reason I don't have it installed and I use it most of the time. So, okay. And here we just have to see on what page it is because we have multiple pages, here it is. And then simply we just ask it to run and install Debian on the USB stick. Well, not install, put all the files for the for the boot to be complete. So how we can see, but the nature is here. So here it is. So flash from files, and I'm going to go to download and put Debian and hit open. Then select the target that I want. And this will be the send disk that I have here. And now I just click flash. Now, but then you need privilege access in order to flash, type the password to allow this. So now you put the password that you have on your Mac OS. And now simply you just wait. I'm validating if you want, you can click skip. It's always recommended to just let, uh, let it do the, the validation, make sure everything is properly uh, written there, but I just skip it, I don't care about it. And now that we have the USB stick, all we have to do is just install Debian and we're out. Okay, so now that we have the tablet ready, all we have to do is just simply just plug in the USB hard drive here, the USB hard drive, I'm sorry, the USB stick here turn on the tablet and you need to find out what is the BIOS for this tablet. And every single tablet has, you know, its own BIOS and things like this. So now in BIOS, you need to make sure that the UEFI SanDisk partition, it's, well, depending on what company you have. I have a SanDisk, so this one is put and now you just go with graphical installation and you just install Debian like normal. The only problem is, how yeah, you can see Debian is kind of a, uh, tricky spot right now because the position is in portrait mode so you need to kind of find a way to install this one so i'm in united kingdom british and here debian will you literally automatically get all the drivers and everything you just connect it to the internet and that, that's it and it will be easy so if you know how to install debian you can literally just skip this part so here you just connect to your wi-fi and here you just give a name. Let's call it Casa OS. Uh, root password, if you wanna put a root password, I normally just put one when I'm making a video like this. Use a name for the thing Casa OS. Password, the same password, just root. Just one, I'm sorry. And here, the easiest way is use the largest continuous free space or use the entire disk. I will recommend to use the entire disk. The reason is make sure you're, you're using the the one that is coming from the tablet, how you can see, see in my sandisk here. So this one will be the one and all files in one partition recommended for new users. I will recommend to go with all files in one partition because like this, you won't have any problems. Formatted, yes. So this partition is going to be formatted. Just click yes. Continue and here we are now we are in Debian. So from here what we have to do is Really really simple. All we have to do is just open Firefox and here we just have to type Casa OS Install The installation is very very simple. It's just a simple command line that which is here That we are going to copy in the terminal 
Now, I know it's not the best website. Here we are. So now we open terminal. And here we just do sudo app update so we can update everything so cast os is not a sudo error so this is really really annoying but it's a way to to install to fix it so just put your password now we are a sudo error so sudo app install jetted and i guess you will install this application for us and then we will make ourselves a sudo error and we won't be able to have this problem. Now, this is a thing with Casa or with Casa with Debian. I'm sorry, so I don't know what's going on. But if we get it slash etc slash sudo errors, it will open a file. Now, just scroll down until you will see root. So here, all you have to do is just type your username and simply just copy this line. Control C, Control V here, save it. And now you won't have any problem with the error that you are not a sudo error. So all we have to do now is just copy this link again. Now just do sudo app update just to make sure we're on the, we have the latest updates and everything. And now sudo app upgrade, nothing. And here we just paste the command that we got. Now how you can see curl is not installed. So sudo apt install curl. And now, well, I don't know why it did work. And now we should put, sometimes the command still doesn't work after you install curl. And in that scenario, you just, just restart uh, Debian and then it will work. I don't know why, but how you can see now we're actually installing Okay, so I had a small problem installing it for some reason. So normally after you install uh, Casa OS, you will get an IP address, but for some reason it didn't want to show up. So what you have to put is just you type AP slash A, and then you will get this information here. How you can see here in WLO2, I have this IP address. So this is the IP address that we're going to use to connect to Casa OS. And now let's connect it. So we're going to take this one over here and we're going to transfer to the MacBook so we can literally uh, configure everything. So let's jump Okay, there. so now that we're on the computer, we're just going to open and we're going to pull the IP address that it gave us, which is 210. And how you can see now we have CasOS. So put a username, doesn't matter which one you want. I'll just put CasOS, put a Password, it has to be like a longer password, otherwise it won't let you. So I can put one, for example. And then that's it. I am in Casa OS. Save the password, boom. And how you can see, I got all the information here. So the RAM, CPU, how much is using it, and things like this, which at the moment, you know, it's a good thing. But what happens when I want to, you know, copy movies and everything here? So for example, here in media, all I have to do is just share this. How you can see you have for Windows or for Mac. So for Mac, I'll just copy this. Then go into Finder, go to connect to server, and I'll just paste the command that I got from here. How you can see connect, put the username and the password that I get, and you might get an error, which is this one, which is fine. If you get it, just go and connect as a guest. And how you can see now you get as guest. What's the error from? I have no idea why you get it. It's just Casa always it's literally like this. Now let's go to my server here, my actual server on Ray server. And we're going to put a movie. So now let's go into movies here and let's copy a actual movie into uh, Casa OS. So Keep in mind, I'm using this device at the moment with Wi-Fi. So it's not connected to my fast internet, 1000 gigabits and stuff like that. No, the server is running via Wi-Fi. So it's not going to be the fastest connection, but I'm going to keep it as real as possible. So the reason why I'm doing this over Wi-Fi is because this tablet that you see over here, 
at the end of the day, which is, you know, this thing, at the end of the day, it's a computer that you're going to use day-to-day -day use, right? So you're going to listen to music, browse the internet and stuff like this. But it will also become a server when you need it. So while this one is copying, which it will take about 10 minutes, let's connect to the server again and install what we need for the server. So how you can see, I can install all of this one, but if I go to the App Store, just a small advice, because this machine is not powerful enough, it will run a little bit slow when you're trying to do some things. But here, for example, I'm going, going to install Jellyfin. Now, Jellyfin is what I will need to watch my movies. You can also install applications like Plex or MB. I prefer Jellyfin, it's an open source uh, project, and you know, I love open source project. So how you can see, I'm now installing Jellyfin while I'm also copying the movie here. Now, again, doing multiple stuff in the same time, you know, it will slow down the uh, application. Well, the tablet is not the fastest one possible. And since how you can see in the background here is 9% and stuff. Now you can do more things that you want here. You can install AdGuard, which will black all the ads in your house and etc. You can do a lot of stuff. Now, let's set up Jellyfin from this. So how you can see language, I will use English. You have to connect, well, put a username. So Casa OS, put a password. And hit next. Once this one is, I will just add, uh, this one will contain movies, folder, media, click OK. And movies now added you can add more like music tv shows etc i'm just going to stay with movies at the moment uh country where wherever you are just select it here allow remote connection and enable porting and we're done and how you can see now i can log in with my username and password and how you can see i have the movie here so subtitles how you can see you can put subtitles if you want to i'm going to put english subtitle and I will wait for this one to finish. Okay, so everything is now on the device. Now, if we click play, you wait a little bit. And we have our movie. And how you can see it's a 720p. Now with this tablet, for example, 720p is the maximum that you can go. You can go 1080p or 4K, but you can still watch a movie. Now, 15% is what I'm eating and 39% is everything. The good thing about it is that I can literally, I'll just remove the keyboard here. I can literally use the tablet and other things while I'm watching the movie or somebody else is watching the movie. So this is the idea of having a tablet, well, a Windows tablet, make it as a server because somebody can watch a movie on the TV or stuff like this while in the same time, you can do your normal things. So is it the best thing ever? Probably not, depending because you are losing performance and everything and the more thing you will do on the tablet and you know, the movie might suffer and things like this. But the idea that you can have a Windows tablet with you and you can use it as a laptop or it doesn't have to be a Windows tablet, it can be a Windows laptop. You can use it as a laptop and then you can transform it into a server for you. You can back up your phone, do every, every single thing that you wanna do, you know? It, this is this is amazing. I wish and I can't wait for the Apple ecosystem, the one that I'm using, to be able to do something like this so I can, I don't know, emulate a true NAS server and stuff like that into something like parallel desktop, for example, and then just having my own server into my laptop and I can do multiple things just using my laptop. Like this, I won't have to have a Unraid server separately in my house, which is always on and things like this. But yeah, that's how you make every tablet, Windows tablet or Windows laptop into a server. I understand you have to give up on Windows and install Debian. If you don't want to do that, you can install Plex, for example, on Windows. It's not the recommended thing, but it will still work and you can still watch the movies. The idea with this one is being Casa OS, for example, you have access to all the applications that you normally have on a server. But there's a different way of doing it, and that's with Windows for Linux for Windows operating system. So we're going to explore that in a future video if you don't want to delete Windows. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, in the next one.